Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness Podcast. Your host, Danita Young, and today we're interviewing Felicia, and she's going to walk us through the common misconceptions of losing weight. Now, whether that's macro, supplements, caffeine, stress, hormones, she's going to take us all through these misconceptions. So I'm excited to bring her on. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching. Hi everyone, I have been in the fitness space since I was in my teens. Yeah, you know, I've tried every fad diet there is. I've tried every way, possible way to lose weight. That's been my obsession when I was younger. I was doing all the wrong things. And through trial and error, I've learned the right ways. Two years I was managing a supplement store and now I just moved over to another fitness company where I'm doing um, wholesale with supplements. What do you think is the biggest misconception in women's weight loss space between the ages of like after 30 that you're commonly seeing in your store? Biggest misconceptions would absolutely be to, first of all, not be too restricted. Um, But again, it goes back to that. A lot of people think that you need more fat burners. You need to move more. You need to do excessive amounts of cardio. You need to eat nothing, preferably just a spinach leaf a day. That's the only way to lose weight. People keep doing that. What happens is that you put your body in survival mode. Your body is under attack at all times because you're not feeding it. You're not taking care of it. And so your body's going to retaliate by thinking, oh, my God, we don't know when we're going to be fed again. So we're going to hold on to all these stored fat to the best of our ability thing that I say on this that I really like is, okay, so if we've eaten less, has it worked? It really just comes down to that. Because I think as women, we've all tried the whole starving ourselves, the skipping meals that eating one spinach leaf a day. And (laughs) clearly, it didn't work for me. And it hasn't worked for them. And so at some point, the initiative insanity is continue to keep doing something over and over and over and expecting a different result. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I mean, at the end of the day, the biggest lesson that I've learned is that everyone is different and no one pays attention to this. Everyone is like, okay, well, this person is doing this and I want to look like them. So I'm just going to do what they're doing and it's going to work for me too. But they don't take into consideration that underlying conditions, for instance, we all grew up differently. I just recently learned that, um, for instance, your gut microbiome is dependent on so many different factors, how much you were playing outside as a kid is going to affect your microbiome today. And then also if you had pets in your house, that's going to affect your microbiome today. Your microbiome affects everything, your mood, your hormones and everything. And that's another thing. Most of the time, your hormones are out of balance because of so many other different factors, the food that we're eating, our environment and everything else that this world today is just ruining us with all the toxins and everything that is just causing a lot of disruption in your microbiome and your hormones. And most people, how many people are doing regular lab work? Most people are not unless you are competing usually. So all these competitors that we're seeing that yes, that that's what they're eating. And that's what also what they're pushing on social media and everything they're not talking about their coaches. They're not talking about all the lab work that they're doing, all the steroids that are out there that are making them look like that also. But that's all an individualized program. And just because it's working for them doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. Yeah, on that topic, I like that you said that because what I've been seeing too on my side of the world over here with fitness is that sleep and stress have a huge role into it more than we realize. And I just learned this recently that that muscle mass is actually built in your REM sleep. And that if you're not sleeping, it's catabolic to muscle. The other thing I learned is stress, creating that cortisol is also catabolic to muscle. And when we really become more educated as far as what muscle is, it's not that bulkiness that we kind of imagined of making that manly look. No, muscle mass is our metabolism. And so 
learning that that is our fat burning machine and that our 20s is when we had the most muscle mass on our body. Uh, There's so much confusion about this word of metabolism. And and honestly, 99.9% of women that come to me, they have no idea what the metabolism really is. They're thinking it's like thyroid or they think it's just like some magical thing within our body that just deteriorates over time. What is this thing within our body that we can actually control to then get control over our weight in general? I told you earlier, it's a matter of finding your homeostasis. You have to take care of your body until it's at a place where it's going to work for you. So you kind of want to light this fire. I see metabolism as a burning fire. And in order for that to work, you have to keep feeding it. You have to keep putting logs on the fire, not starving it. Starving a fire is going to, it's going to end with it uh, burning out completely. And that's, that's not what we want to do. We want to keep the fire burning. So feeding the body proper nutrition, they're not educated about the macros, which is all that you really need to know to make basic changes, sleep enough we hear this all the time sleep enough and then so many people are like oh i don't need sleep pound energy drinks and they're drinking so much coffee throughout the day to make it through the day right and then at the end of the night they can fall asleep because they're crashing from all the caffeine they don't know is that it impacts your deep sleep and exactly what you're saying in your deep sleep and your REM sleep, that's when you're growing. So I used to have this conversation with all the young guys all the time. I loved it. They would come in and they're like, oh, where's your strongest pre-workout? And they were asking for like 500 milligrams of caffeine and they were taking it at like 8 p.m. And I was saying the same thing. Like one, do you know that caffeine is vasoconstricting? So it's going to close up your blood flow instead of increasing it, which is kind of what you want when you're working out. I don't know if you knew this. I did not. When you take in excessive amounts of caffeine, obviously it helps you feel energized. And then I would always tell them, if you need that extra motivation, you're not motivated enough to go to the gym and work out yourself and you need the caffeine, go for it. Absolutely. But don't take it at 8 p.m. because you're being counterproductive with it because you want to grow, which is happening in your sleep. And you're messing it up completely when you're drinking caffeine that late. That's one thing. Caffeine is great, but it is also not good if you want to grow muscle, which you want to do if you want to increase your metabolism. So I cut mine completely, actually. And your caffeine intake? Yeah, I'm at pretty much 75 milligrams a day right now. My questions I had for you was about pre-workout. So thanks for summing that up and explaining that. Um, I did not know that it would actually would constrict the dilation of the vessels, which the blood flow, that's that's really crazy. In this world of supplements, have you learned anything about balancing hormones better for women? Or what have you learned there? I mean, I can see if someone is probably unbalanced in their hormones. If people are complaining about fatigue, brain fog, um, especially guys, if they feel like they're depressed, say you should probably do like at least like a natural test booster or something. Uh, With women too, tests can be shut in women too. Or if you have extreme PMS symptoms, um, trouble, weight loss resistance, usually hormones are at play because of mostly our society in the modern world that we're living in the food that we're taking in the water that we're drinking everything is ruining it because it's ruining our microbiome and in turn our hormones are affected by it so most people have an hormonal imbalance but that doesn't mean that you should jump on supplements back to hormones right away i told everyone to yes you can try some natural hormonal uh, products, but that doesn't mean that that's something that you need. Because this, again, it's super individual. There's so many companies that are going to claim to do something. And then most people are not educated by the ingredient, a lot of harm in it. So anything that is claiming to affect your hormones, even thyroid, you should be very, very careful with it because it's individualized. So I always recommend people to go and get your blood work done, work with someone that can actually see what what do you actually need? Because when it comes to hormones, it's not something that you want to mess around with at all. Yeah. What are some solutions that you have found to put your body more in that homeostasis so that for somebody that's listening, they're like, geez, how do I find my way out of this like hellhole? Well, one focus on getting in more sleep. I'm actually working with a coach right now who has been stressing this a lot. And I've already worked on my stress for so many years, but she 
for the first time, instead of just giving me, you know, a meal plan and a workout, she's actually, she's telling me to, I need to take two walks every day, 20 to 30 minutes with no headphones, no phone calls, no music, nothing just to get as a meditation practice, basically, Mm -hmm. and journal and meditate, have a slow awakening. So waking up slower, and that includes not drinking caffeine too early, and then eat properly, learn about macros in understanding that you need protein, carbs and fats, I'm sure that you're stressing this a lot every meal and your vegetables, because those especially your carbs and fats for women are super important for your hormone and for hormonal health. And a lot of people are like, Oh, no, I'm not going to eat that at all, because it's going to make me gain weight. But then guess what, you are causing chaos in your body. And your fats are amazing for your brain. So I'm sure that anyone that is staying away from fats have insane brain fog energy levels are probably low, you don't get any energy from carbs. understanding that and trying to eat every like three or four hours, at least to keep that fire burning, and then go to bed at a proper time to get eight hours of sleep, seven or eight hours of sleep. That has been insane. It's huge difference for me, especially not that I'm, I'm not drinking any caffeine. Thanks for sharing that. I've learned a lot about caffeine, especially as we understand more of our hormones in a month, we go through those four different phases. And when women are struggling with like cramps or cravings or having like all these symptoms with our hormones, what I've actually found is that when your body is and heightened with this caffeine, it also creates more of these disruptive symptoms. And so what I did is I actually just when you're in harmony with your body, you can start to kind of see the signs and with that new education, Uh, what it allowed me to do is if I started to kind of feel my cramps rising, I would take the caffeine away and wow, it like mellow me out that way. And so what I've realized going back to kind of like the stress that you're talking about is we can become addicted to stress just as there's all these types of addictions in life. And I realized that we can have an emotional home of like comfort of stress. And I realized that was one of mine and it was because I was raised that way. And I also had a belief system that if I'm not enough and that's my root core belief system, then I would operate in this place of high stress. So I'd overwork and I heighten myself to keep doing more and more and more and more. What we realize obviously is doing more isn't giving you the solution that you want. And so finding that balance with everything. And I love that you're mentioning things that are natural and holistic to bring ourselves back down into that homeostasis with our body, because these extremes, if they would have worked, they would have worked, but they're not. So we really clearly need to find a different solution. For me, being able to lower that caffeine, lowering your cortisol, And also doing these exercises as such as meditative walking and things, really, I've been aware of like what my fear vibration versus my love vibration, and just being in tune with the frequency I'm operating in and realizing, wow, I was really comfortable and stressed because I thought I was getting more stuff done. And then it was creating my cycle, which ultimately was just burning me out and then leading me back to the belief of I'm not enough. And so now that I can operate from a place of I am enough, and I can let go of that fear, And then I can now be in balance with how I work. Wow, what a different world it's been. And it's been really cool. So thank you for sharing that. Really made me think about what's been shifting for for me in the last couple of months. Yeah, and that's huge too. Just as me and Andy, actually, we talked about this a lot, how everything grows when you are stepping away from it, when you are resting in a rest place right so muscles are growing when you're sleeping in the same way your creativity is happening only when you are resting Mm -hmm. and i learned this in in, uh, college as well when you are learning something if you are spending 90 minutes to read or learn something or you have some type of high demanding meeting or something at work you have to give yourself a little break afterwards because that's when you're retaining the information. If you keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, nothing is going to stick, especially not your mind. Um, I was not retaining anything. I was not mm. retaining anything of those audiobooks. I was not retaining any of any of the information from this podcast. So then what's the point? What's the point of even listening to it? You know, so I started 
listening to a podcast and then I would take a 20 minute walk or something just and completely just walk around and look what's around me and everything. And that's when you're retaining the information. So, and it's the same thing, you know, when you're lifting weights, when you're resting is when your body is actually building the muscle. Wow. That is very, very, very profound. (laughs) Well, I don't think ever learned that, you know, it's so difficult to learn because we just keep forcing and pushing and forcing and pushing. I'm going to go back to macros. Um, th- that word is so intimidating to so many women that I've been speaking with. And they are just kind of in no fear of it. They're just like, I don't know anything about it. I'm scared of it. And it's I think not, because yeah. there's been so many extremes and so many like numbers thrown at them yeah. and it's really overwhelming. So what has helped you be able to break down this big word? <laughs> it's actually a really small word, but this big, scary thing make it simple and how has it worked for you i think the simplest way to look at it if you divide everything up in different categories so you have all your proteins you have all your carbohydrates and then you have all your fats and you have different things on in the different categories and then just making sure that your plate consists of a little bit of each of those things because a lot of people are and that's another thing a lot of people are not educated in it they think that potato is a protein and same thing um with vegan protein and stuff like that and different sources of things and it doesn't have to be complicated you don't have to count all your calories and everything but you have to make sure that you're eating enough what are you doing right now obviously it's not working right and then what are some small changes that you can do to this so say that you're eating some oatmeal only or cereal with milk in the morning what, are, what is something that you can add to that or make it into a full complete meal? Like where's your fats, where's your protein, where's your carbs? And then what are you eating for lunch? Well, how can you change that? How can you add a little bit more protein? Most people are not eating enough protein. That is one thing. So supplementing with protein is one thing that I used to tell everyone that they should. That's where it comes into getting quality products too and supplements because... I would have a lot of customers coming in and, oh, protein gives me acne. Yeah, it does. If you have a bunch of fillers in it and you have a bunch of fats and carbs that are not supposed to be there, but they put it in there because they need it to taste good because otherwise no one's going to buy their product. The best way to look at it is just understanding, educating yourself in what is what is protein, what is carbs, and what is fats, and do I have all of it on my plate? That is a beautiful first step. I agree with you. And I absolutely agree with you that most women are not only protein deficient, but extremely protein deficient. This is all I do all day long is I just ask them, what are they eating and how much of it has protein in it? And oftentimes a lot of women are skipping meals because this intermittent fasting has really came over the fitness space. And then also the whole keto world of making them fear carbohydrates, thinking that it's going to make them fat. And so I think just the process of what we've been taught and raised in our life of food equals fatness, and that we, you know, afraid of it has created this really unhealthy relationship with food. And so when we think of adding more, and I think that's the problem is when they think of I'm just eating cereal with milk, and they think of adding anything more to that, it, it kind of stiffens them and makes them kind of freak out a little bit. And so I remember even when I had my coach and he was like, all right, so you're eating about three, four times a day. Well, we're going to bump that up to five, six. And I was like in traumatic, frantic mode thinking I'm going to be fat. And it is like an unlearning that we have to do because it's, it's, we've been conditioned to think that less is more. Yeah. And, and then we ask ourselves, well, why am I lethargic? Why am I tired all the yeah. time? Well, yeah, clearly exactly. you're not freaking eating enough, right? Yeah. And then, and- yeah, something must be wrong with me or something. I used to be in the same place. There's actually my last coach. She, there's a picture of side by side picture of me, 1700 calories versus 2300 calories, which to me, When I was eating 1,700, if you would tell me that I would eat that much, I would be like, oh, great, I'm going to gain a lot of weight. That's what I was kind of prepared for. I look 10 times leaner. I lost about 10 or 15 pounds between those two pictures. And I, but I was at the same time, I was kind of like, this doesn't make sense. I'm working out on the 1,700 calorie picture. I was working out six times a week. And the other one, I was working out three. And it was kind of weird because I was I was walking around. I had better energy. I was not stressed because she was stressing the stress and the cortisol so much. 
and had me not stressed. I was sleeping more. So my energy was amazing. Wasn't drinking any caffeine. I was eating six times a day and a lot too. I was working out three times a week and I looked like I was ready to step on stage. It was weird. And it just didn't make sense to me. But I was kind of like, oh, I finally get it because I'm taking care of my body now. My body is in a good place. I'm being kind to myself. I'm being kind to my body. I'm letting it rest. And then all of this has led to me looking like I wanted to, but I wasn't even trying. It's crazy. It's still crazy to me. And I think a lot of people are having a hard time, especially applying it to themselves. It was easy for me to talk about it and explain it to other people, but it was really hard for me to apply it to myself. Pain, I mean, you guys is brutal. And so being able to live on the other side of that, what a relief. And so that's why we're here today is being able to show you there is a different side. And it is hard. We Kim Kardashian that's coming out with these suckers that are appetite suppressant suckers. And that just shows you, again, you're just stuffing yourself down, not listening to yourself and not listening to your your, to your true metabolism. And when you're starving yourself with a sucker, that's, yeah. the, that's the saddest thing to me because one of the biggest wins that I have with my members is when they actually start feeling hungry again. And I'm like, yay, that's your metabolism right. speeding up. Like this right. is phenomenal. This is great news. And they're like, what, really? Oh, I, I've been I've been taught to try to suppress the appetite, like push away the hunger. And it's just so, it's so backwards, you know? And I, I really been looking at it and it's like, okay, so the biggest loser got canceled by the contestants. Now you have Jenny Craig that's shutting their doors. At some point you just go, it's an $80 billion weight loss industry. Like something's wrong. Something's really, really wrong. But that's like, the why? thing, because it's money in it. And that was the same thing. All of my customers were confused. They would come into the store and they're like, we're looking for fat burners. And I was like, here's a grocery bill. Go go get better food and come back, measure what you eat in a day and then come back and we can talk about your nutrition instead. And they're like, why are you not trying to sell me something? Usually like supplement store would be like, yeah, we have this one and it's going to make you lose fat in three days. And then... And then it doesn't happen and they're blaming themselves and then they're falling back on their old habits and everything. So it actually is this easy, even though it's super hard to understand. It's super, super hard to take in that information. It can't be that easy. It has to be hard because it has to be hard. Otherwise, nothing is going to change. It is easy. It yeah. is just that you, you've created a barrier between yourself and your body. But your body is in survival mode. That's the worst place that you can be. And too many people are constantly every single day to do more, to get more, to do more. And you just do the opposite. How crazy, however crazy that sounds to just rest more, it's going to help your digestive system and it's going to help your metabolism and muscle growth and everything. What a great podcast on the misconceptions of macro supplements, caffeine, stress, hormones. Thanks for this. Appreciate it. I mean, I learned a lot today. I just appreciate you coming on today and sharing your insight. Of course. I appreciate you. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Vance Barbell. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. You have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals. Booty bands and barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're gonna love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.